Hi, welcome back to MEEN 368. Today we are going to look at how do we figure out moments and forces on weld. So we are going to write this down. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to figure out how to design welds. And our primary task is to, first task is to figure out what are the forces and moments on welds. That's what we're trying to do today. So let's look at a particular example. Let's say I have two steel plates, this one and this L bracket. So of course it doesn't look like L bracket, there's supposed to be one continuous L bracket and I want to weld it here. You see that? So let us say I want to weld it here. Notice I didn't put the weld all the way to the corner. Right? That's all the weld is here and there. Okay? And I am applying some forces to this thing. So let us say the X component of the force, uh, let's say this one is um, 100 uh, pounds. Sorry, let me put the arrow the other way. So the X component of this is a hundred pounds going the other way, like that, acting there. Okay, then there's a vertical vertical force which is 40 pounds. And then there's a force going into the board. So it doesn't look like it, but let me let me show you what I mean. This is supposed to be parallel to that. There you go. So the force going in whose magnitude, the magnitude of this force is uh, 100 pounds. And this total length from here to here is let's say 14 inches. Uh, this length from here to here is four inches and I have decided I'm going to give a one inch gap here and a one inch gap here and this is supposed to be four inches that's supposed to be four inches okay so I'm sorry two inch gap here not one inch so it starts out two inches then it's four inches then the total is 14 inches that's the dimension so these things you have to measure This you have to estimate and this where you put it and so on you have to design okay you got the idea right so how do we do this problem we need to figure out what are the stresses in the weld and the American Welding Society and so on has a fairly standard procedure for doing this. This is not, this is similar to what we did for calculating equivalent stresses, but the equivalent stress definition here is slightly different. So we will have to calculate the stresses. In order to do that, the, the stresses are due to direct forces and bending moment. and talk and you have to do this in a systematic way if you do this in a fairly random way things will not work okay so you got to do this in a systematic way i'm going to show you how to do this completely systematically okay the first step to doing this identify weld surface and locate the center of mass or center of geometry of the weld. Okay, so the weld surface is this guy, right? That's the surface on which I'm doing the welding. So that's here. 
and I have drawn the two lines, these are the weld lines. And let's say I want to pick a thickness or throat thickness of one fourth inch. In general, we have to calculate it, but my approach to all of this is always pick all the dimensions and verify if they work. That's the easier thing to do. Most of the books will tell you calculate the dimensions. Most of the time, you know, you can pick some dimension and if it's way, 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 way over designed, then you can come back and cut it. Or if it's way, way under designed, you can come back and, and fix it. Okay. But it will give you an idea. That's a much better scheme, especially now that you have calculators and so on. That's the easier thing to do. Okay. So I've done this. Now I'm going to find the center of, center of mass. Now this is where we are helped by the textbooks and tables and so on. So if you want to find a center of mass for various kinds of wells, you can go up here. This is actually a table that's there in your book in Shigli. So you can see that it tells you lots of things. So this is table 9.1. It's in chapter 9 of Shigli. And what it does is it tells you where the center of mass is. Can you see the, the point G? So it tells you for every kind of weld, where is the center of mass? Not only that, it will tell you the area of the weld. It will tell you what is the polar moment of inertia. We will need this when we do torsion. This is J and you notice it says J U and things like that. So what does J U mean? So you go down here and it will tell you what it means. If you go down all the way to the, to the bottom. It will tell you G is the centroid of the weld group. Can you see that? H is the weld size. Place plane of torque couple in the plane of paper. All welds are of unit width. That's so what we're going to assume is that these numbers have to be multiplied by the throat thickness in order to get the actual values. Okay, not the area. Ju must be multiplied by throat thickness. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so we will we will proceed with that idea. So in our case, that's pretty easy. This is four inches. That's four inches. And here is the center of gravity. That's the centroid. So that's the first thing to do. Identify the centroid. Okay. Once you identify the centroid, things are very easy. I am now going to put the axis. Step two. axis and I'm going to call the, the normal perpendicular to the plane as Z and the two directions as X and Y. Right? Once you have that, we are in business. Now we are going to calculate the effect of the applied forces on the web. For that, what we do is I'm going to make a copy because I'm going to, we have to do this six times. I mean, I'll have to draw six different figures. And this, if you think it's painful, it's not really. It's just that we got to draw this over and over again. So let me make this small. Two, three, four, five, six, like that. I'll tell you what are the six effects. I'm trying to fit this all in one page. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. I'm wondering, what are the six effects? Not to worry. I mean, the six effects are going to be three direct forces and three shear forces. Okay, so let's do, there will be three direct forces. What do I mean by that? Notice that essentially speaking, I'm going to move this force from this location to that location, to the centroid. That's what I'm going to do. 
and when i move the force i have to account, of course account for the torque no so there will be three torques and three forces that's why i have six three torques three forces let me show you how i calculate these things fx is very easy so this remember my z axis is like this x axis is like that y axis is like this so first one i am going to do is fx that is the direct force along the x axis then the second effect is going to be fy direct force along the y axis the third effect is going to be fz normal force along the y axis or, z, or the direct force along the z axis then i have i will talk about moments so here is the center of mass so here is the axis bending moment around this axis notice it's going clockwise it's going clockwise up so sorry counter clockwise up or right hand roll up like that right and that's that will be called my then i'll have one which goes counter clockwise this way and that will be called mz sorry mx and the last one is the one that's going out of the board going counter clockwise uh, this way and that will be called mz can you see that i have to find these six numbers well let's start the first ones are very easy so remember my force is way out here i'm going to redraw that force so that you can see it on the graph my force was way out here like that and i had fx was 40 pounds this one fy was 40 pounds and that was 100 pounds right and this distance from g to p so this is this distance was 10 inches and this distance is 4 inches okay the reason is the total distance from here to here is 12 then minus 2 inches that's where the center of gravity is so that's 10 inch long so all of these calculations you have to do okay so when i do that fx is very easy fx is just that force 40 pounds fy is just that force 40 pounds fz is that just that force but remember fz is pointing out of the board this is going in so fz is negative 100 pounds now comes the three moments in reality if i want to calculate the moment m will be equal to r cross f and then i have to do this cross product of course if you have a calculator you can do this cross product very easily if you don't have a calculator you can do this in a very very uh, straightforward way my equals z times fx minus x times fz okay how do you remember notice if i write x y and z so it will kind of glow go in a clockwise counter clockwise in, in a clockwise direction like that so if i put my it will be z fx minus x fz so it will be these two things okay mx will be cycle it around y fz minus z fy and mz will be so let us see mz will be x fy minus y fx this is called the torque this is a bending moment that's a bending moment let's calculate this for our body so let us see my will be z fx so z is 4 inches 4 times fx is 40 minus x times fz x is 10 inches fz is minus 100 so that will turn out to be uh for how much was that that was 1160 
You do the same thing here. Y is 0 times Fz is 100. Sorry, minus 100. Minus Z is 4 times Fy is 40. And you will get 160 inch pounds. This one will give me X is 10. Fy is 40. Minus 0 times 40. That will also give me that will give me 400. That's how it works. Okay. So please remember, and this these three things, M Y, M X, M Z, are nothing but the R cross F terms. That's all that is good. And it doesn't matter which sequence you write. I wrote, I wrote it as M Y, M X, M Z. You can write it as M X, M Y, M Z. So, and this is very important. So, I'll tell you how to remember it. You can start out with mz. That's the easy one. It's xfy minus yfx. And then cycle. That means m uh, x will be yfz minus zfx. My will be zfx minus x. Um, sorry, ZFY minus XFZ. Okay, this is just R cross F and the components of R cross F. If your calculator has R cross F, you just, you can just do R cross F where R is this. R is the vector going from G to P. That vector is R. So either way, you can do it. Once you have the moments and the and the direct forces, we can then do the stresses. Okay, thanks.